Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am here live with my model, Lauren. Um, she's no stranger to Unite TV. You see her all over our page. She's been here a bunch of times modeling. We're so grateful to have her. She's truly like a hair chameleon. We can do anything on her and she definitely owns up to the look. So good morning. Are we good? Are we We're on? Great, yeah. Okay, so I don't want to alarm anybody, but 49 days till Christmas. Can you believe it? So that means if you're a hairdresser, this is a great chance to make some extra money behind the chair, doing um, formal styling, some updos, party prep, you know, all the things. Clients love it. And a lot of times they don't even realize that we do these things. So it's a great service to offer. Even if you just have extra time after a color service, adding an extra little braid or a finger wave or something is always an amazing thing to do. So today on Lauren, we are going to do a um, modern Gatsby inspired hairstyle on her, which I'm really excited. I haven't done this on her yet. Uh, so it's going to be, if I think of like Gatsby party and that kind of thing, I'm thinking of like finger waves and pin curls and how do we approach that in a modern sort of way? So let's get started. What do you think? Okay, so 90% of the time when I'm doing up styling, I um, face the client either towards the mirror in a salon or I will hand them a mirror so they can see what I'm doing. So the reason for that is you gotta read someone's like nonverbal cues. So when I'm doing her hair, if I left her hair in the middle and she's really you know, a side part girl, she's gonna start making facial expressions and things that are gonna make me realize that she's not feeling the vibe of where I'm going. And me personally, I'd much rather know that before we get all the way into it so that I can switch it up. And especially on a style like this, because it's definitely a fix it, forget it kind of look. So there's no adjusting it besides like washing it completely out and starting over. So I want to do a side part on her today. So I'm just going to kind of brush this back and see kind of where it naturally goes. And then I always like like to talk to the client, like is there a side you prefer to go to, Lauren? Um, honestly, either. You don't have a preference? No, not really. Okay, so this is sometimes an issue when the client comes in and they already have a hard center parting. You could leave that and finger wave it you know, from, from that point back. Uh, but because it's a wet look style, we can basically put it wherever we want. And if she's not, does not have a preference, then the best thing you can do is just kind of brush it back and, you know, move it around and see where it wants to go. I definitely want this to have a dramatic feel. So I'm going to go a little further and see how you can see all this like flying up. That might be problematic, so maybe we go this way. And these are just kind of things that I look at before I even get started. And again, I'm watching her nonverbal cues to see if she's like hating it, then we would, you know, kind of adjust. But Lauren is all pro, so she's going to love whatever I do. Yeah, I'm going to go this way. That seems like it's going to be the the best way. So typically um, center of the eye back, that's usually a good side part. You could obviously go more if you wanted like more of a dramatic look, but I like how that looks on her. And then we're going to start at the top of the head, tip your head forward for me, Lauren, and go straight down to her ears. And this like finger wave is gonna end right behind her ear. So this section, this whole section, we're just gonna pull back and out of our way for now. So same thing on the other side. Just kind of like curving it with the head and then getting all of that out of your way because we're gonna use all of this later. 
So like always, if you guys have any questions on what I'm doing or specifically on upstyling or product usage, you're welcome to fire away questions. You can always find these lives later after the fact too. So if you have questions later, you can you know DM us or send us messages. Happy to answer any questions. Compliments are raining in. Someone loves your pants. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now we have our sectioning. I'm gonna pin this one out of my way. So this side is gonna be the one with a little more height and then we're gonna finger wave that back. And this one is gonna be a flatter look. So I'm gonna actually start on that side, pin that out of the way. Okay, so this is one of the most used tricks I learned from Mr. Gary Baker backstage. It's how to create a wet look or finger wave type styling. And these are the, definitely the two go-to products for that. I can't make these straight today. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, the expand -a volume and then the Session Max Spray. This is going to make that shiny, moldable finish um, almost like glue. The light's going to reflect off it and it's going to be like magic when you're creating these waves. So you're going to go in first um, with your expand -a volume. So this, if you're not using this, this is like a must have product. So on a daily use, like on my hair today, I love to combo this product with other products before blow drying. So I used it on my roots. That's how I get this crazy side wave. Or, yeah, side wave. And then I use laser straight on the end so it's you know sleek at the bottom. So definitely um, for daily use as a root uh, volumizer. But when used backstage or for formal styling, you can also use it uh, as the base to create the waves, which is what I'm gonna show you today. It can get locked in with the blow dryer and it'll adhere and not move forever and give like the greatest shine without getting flaky. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Becca NC says, yes, that's my favorite technique. Yes. And then hair by Anastasia is throwing flames at you. Ooh, I like the flames. It's probably for you. No, it's not for you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna get her hair a little bit damp. What do you suppose is the best way to see? Like maybe from that angle? That'll work. Is that good? Okay. Yeah, we'll make any adjustments as we go. Okay. okay, so expand the volume. I'm gonna shake it up really good. As I've mentioned before, the nozzle points downwards. So it's really good. You could get like right into wherever it is that you want to um, spray on the hair without it going haywire. So we are going to start at the bottom. And you can use as much of this like as you want. You, you really can't use too much. And then we'll go in with a comb and just kind of comb that through make sure it's really saturated. And then about one inch partings will go up. Again, spraying it all the way on, really saturating it. I find when doing like slick ponytails, finger waves, any of that kind of stuff, it's way easier on wet hair, obviously. So we're just gonna get this as wet as we can. And Lauren has wavy hair, so as we get this wet, obviously some of her own kind of curl pattern is gonna come out, which is gonna definitely make it easier for us. I don't like to go too far like against the grain, so I can already see where it's going. So why make it harder for yourself? And you can see I'm not saturating her ends, because like I said, this is gonna kind of come back into her hair, and we're gonna want this texture to match the texture down here. So we're just doing that same process 
all the way up. Look at this highlight moment right there. Your makeup looks great. Is that a shout out to Kelsey? That's a shout out to yeah, Kelsey. Come awesome. show us those boots. <laughs> Come here, Kelsey. Yeah, you need to show us those boots. Yeah. Kelsey, come here. Let's show you off for a second. Oh, yeah, no, come I'm here. Not, no. <laughs> Kelsey's going to be shy, but... <laughs> My boots are the show, not me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we've got that all on. We're just going to do a little bit of detail work here for the parting because I want it to be really severe. You can see that part. It's really clean that way. Okay. So now I'm going to grab one more uh, clip, sorry, and just clip that right out of the way so it stays out of my way. And then I am going to give this to Lauren. She's going to hand these to me. Um, you can just pull out these like flat ones. Okay. So these are just like flat pins. They're great for finger waves because they're not going to leave a crease. And then you can just kind of push them in in the direction of the wave. Okay, so I'm going to just do one more little. Squirt there. Can you see okay, Mike? Yeah, that's a great angle. If I don't say so myself. <laughs> You've always got the angles. Okay, so that was a good like visual of that. If you don't shake it, or if you have it the wrong direction, it's not gonna come out. So making sure that you keep it vertical and shake it before you use it, that's gonna give you the best um, distribution of the product. So I can, like I said, I can already kind of see where her hair's going. So I'm gonna go in with a fine tooth comb and I'm just gonna sort of start manipulating the hair. And then once I kind of like where it is, can you still see Mike? Yes. I'm just gonna round it. Out and start pushing it the opposite direction. We can always go in and detail her hairline later. But I really love the look of that. So now I'm going to take a pen or the clip that I was talking about and then you're going to flat lay it to hold that into place. If it gets in your way, you can move it, but that's what we're doing for now. So now this one is going to, actually, I think I want this to be up a little higher. So I'm gonna go this way with it and push it down. That way I can get one more wave out of her hair. So you're just kind of like pinching and pulling. And like I said, knowing that we're going to end behind her ear, that's going to be the key factor. So that's going to go there. And then I'm going to take another pen. And you kind of just want to go right in where that wave's going to be. Okay, so that looks pretty great to me for that side. So I feel like it's a little dry here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more product there. And then we're just gonna let that hang there. And like I said, that'll go into the dry detail that we're gonna do in the back. So I'll just take one more. And 
and just kind of go like that. So that's kind of a modern version of it because there's just not so many um, curves, like a typical finger wave, you could pinch it up more, but I'm gonna do a lot more on this side. So I really just wanted this to be like a flat, glamorous wave so that this side can be the dramatic high part in the front. So now you're just gonna go in with a diffuser and a blow dryer. Lots of different choices for this. You can use the traditional diffuser or just like a sock diffuser. The point is just so that there's no direct heat going on, uh, not heat, air. Um, can someone, thank you. You don't wanna like blow out what you just put into her hair. So if you use the diffuser, it just kind of diffuses the air a little bit so that it's not like a direct hit against her hair. Did I get you? Okay. That'll be for the live replay. <laughs> So you won't be able to really hear me during this, but I'm just drying that product into the hair. This is a good time if anybody has questions to fire them away. This is a I have it on medium and medium airflow and medium heat. You could do high heat or if you wanted to, I think um, you just don't want to burn okay. the client. And you also want to try not to touch too much during this process. Okay, so we're going to let that set for now. We're going to do the same thing over on the other side. So until we seal this in with Session Max Spray, it's still a little bit pliable for us so we can move it around if we need to. Since I just dried it quick, I'm gonna leave it for now so it can dry a little bit while I do this side. So same process. Going to first get it a little bit damp. You okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a question. Sure. If someone has extremely straight hair, could you still create this look for them, or would you suggest a different holiday look? Um, if they have straight hair, it would still work because the product is, you're going to place the hair with your fingers where you want it. So straight or curly would make no difference. Um, if someone's hair was really curly, that may be a bit of a challenge because it could start frizzing up as you're working on it, but straight hair, no problem. Like literally I'm forming it wherever I want. I just luck out with Lauren because she's got a little wave. So rather than working against myself, I just worked with her current wave. I hope that answered that. She said perfect. So I'm gonna say you nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it girl. Okay, so now we've got this damp. Come through that. Hopefully get rid of that uh, middle part that she had. And there's so many different ways to do this, honestly. Like, you could comb this forward really similar to what we did on that side, and you could make her side um, wave start you know, way down there where it like goes on her head, that would be more like a flat wave. You can also create volume in the front and then start your wave, you know, kind of down there, which I think is more what I had in mind for today. So we're gonna do that. But these are things you can honestly decide as you're going. We had a couple inspo pictures before we started this look. I, I definitely think 
for holiday season coming up. Um, sleeker styles are going to be popular. Um, and also hair accessories. I'm seeing a lot of bows specifically. Did you have our inspo them too? Yeah. So this was our kind of inspiration for today's shoot. Can you see that okay? Yes. Um, so here, that would be more of the flat wave that I was talking about. Hers is more of like a finger wave sort of look. Hold it for just a second. Um, so I'm going to do a version of this with the down, but we're going to have a little bit of height in the front. Yeah, so lots of accessories. Like I said, I'm seeing a lot of bows already um, and a lot of sleek. And I'm so excited, but I think upstyling is coming back. So a lot of um, higher on the head updos, whether it be a bun, a twist, lots of that. And it is funny how we see things at Fashion Week that we think are crazy and then they actually make their way within a year or two to what we're doing behind the, the chair. So I'm just going through and really saturating her hair. And then really the only determining factor with where I kept this part, I just did it at the top of her head. If you wanted to have height, you'd probably go closer to the front. Um, if you wanted it extremely flat, you could go further back. So you can see I'm not being shy with this product. And as always, whenever we do anything live, it's the quicker version. There is like, you could take more time detailing each section and you know figuring out where your wave was gonna go and such, but for the sake of time, we just get to it. So the biggest part on this is gonna be figuring out how much height we want. So we're gonna brush this forward. And then slick it back. So that definitely took away that parting. For this one, since I want to maintain that height, I'm going to go in with a creaseless clip. So these ones are great for the you know front of the hair. You can just go in and really just pull it where you want it. Because remember, this is like setting it, so almost like a curling iron set or a roller set from back in the day. I'm gonna just comb that product through. So the trick to this is sticking your comb in. So you can see I've already got the direction going where I want it to. You're gonna stick your teeth in and pull forward. So can you see that? A little bit, can you turn her a little yep. bit? More Good. Let's try it. So, yeah. so horizontally sticking it in, and I'm. This gives you pull with the hair, right? Yeah, that's clear. And then opposite here, right? So then I'm pulling it back. Except I can't see, so I'm gonna. And like I said, this is all still moldable at this stage of the game. So same thing, I'm gonna stick 
Well, I think at this point what I would do is take one of these pins and it's gonna hold that wave into place. So the direction of the wave going over like that. Brushing out my section. This is when you can tell if there's enough product on there, which there is not. And this is kind of a larger section for a finger wave. So you could see I'm like going through a lot of hair, but Lauren's got a lot of hair. So this trick though is still gonna work even with all of her hair. So you can see that wave starting to form. And like I said, I wanna end her look behind her ear, so I'm just kind of always keeping that in mind. I'm going to take another pen. Oop, let's do a long one. Thanks, love. So, pin this way, that direction. This curl is going this way, so we go that direction. I think the best part of this little trick with the Expanda and the um, Session Max spray is that you literally don't have to be a pro finger waver to make this work. Like, we could just kind of pin as we go, spray more product. The product's really like the hero of the, the thing, the look. And then I'm just going to do the same thing I did over there and pin that out of the way. And then we're going to go in. Give her a little bit more product because we really want this to have that wet finish look. Okay. So same thing. I'm going to go in now and I'm just going to diffuse this to kind of set it into place. Take a minute to kind of dry and set. go on to the back now and we're going to set this in just so it gives it a couple extra minutes to dry. Typically I would go to the next step before I did this, but I want to just give it a couple extra minutes and I don't want you guys having to just watch me um, blow dry endlessly. But you can kind of see how this is going to go into a whole look. So before the shoot, I prepped some hair extensions for Lauren. Um, I did a triple barrel waver, um, like this, and I used a smaller, oh, you can't see me on the black. Um, I think this is called a one inch, so for the barrel size. Um, and then I just put it in a loose braid so that the hair, when I take it out, it's already gonna be sort of in those undone, messy waves. So when I add product to this, it's really gonna give it like that wet look. So it matches pretty good with Lauren's hair. Hers is a little darker, especially because we got it wet, but it's gonna be a perfect uh, blend in the end because you're layering some of her natural hair on top of an extension here. So I did that with a whole set of extensions. Um, the products that I used on it were, um, I sprayed Beach Day Spray before I did the, uh, the triple barrel, 
And then I always finish uh, extensions with um, the dry conditioning spray. Okay, let's see if I can get this. This side feels pretty dry. So now we're gonna go in with uh, the Session Max spray. And we're just gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna really douse right on top of that. I'm gonna pull this out of the way. Tell me when I'm right there. Uh, yeah, you're gonna remove the clips there. Um, I'm gonna spray you're first. You're working on that yeah. side. Yeah, you can come around a little bit. A little more. bit more? That's great. Okay. So I'm just gonna spray on top of wherever I already did and then I'm gonna set it in again with the, the dryer. And you can already tell that the texture from just the Expanda volume going through the ends, it's kind of making that same messy curl that I'm already wanting to do. Okay, so we're gonna get really close. So in the salon when we spray, we're like, woo, you know, we're spraying all out here. For, for um, formal styling, for behind the chair, for, or not behind the chair, for backstage for photo shoots, you're definitely getting really close. So we're just gonna, so see how no hairspray is getting anywhere except where I put it? So just like that. And then, this is the glue. So definitely, however you want this to be, it's gonna be. So. We're just gonna go in with a little detail brush and make sure all those little hairs are where we want them to be. If you're at a shoot and you don't have um, edging cream, this is a great alternative for that because it'll get the hair really wet. You can mold the hair into place, but it does have a little bit of a stickier texture. So I'm just gonna kind of spray a little bit right where I just adjusted. And you can already see the shine factor compared to the back. Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to diffuse that right into place, right where it's at. When it's not sticky to the touch, that's how you know it's done. Okay, so it's almost dry, but I'm gonna come over to the other side while that finishes up. Okay, same thing. The only difference on this side is it always makes me nervous to leave this in while I'm spraying glue. These ones come out no problem, but um, you definitely don't want to have a big old crease. Is it and, because of the plastic on the plastic? Um, it's mostly just because it's the very front of her head, so I can't, okay. like I want to make it perfect. And now it's like a little bit more pliable for me because I already had the expand the volume in there. And you're right, I mean, the plastic piece covers so much of the hair that no product's gonna get under there, so. Okay, so we're, again, really close to her head. And we're just really saturating this wave. All the way down. And like I was saying, this is the time to tweak anything that needs to be tweaked. Because once it's glued in, you're done. And then 
And same thing, we're just gonna dry that in. Okay, so since we only have 15 minutes left, I'm gonna to go to the back so you can, I can show you guys. So this is gonna dry and then we're gonna remove the clips. Hopefully we'll get to that by the end. But let's go on to the extensions. So all I'm gonna do is take these bottom two clips out. Let me go this way, I think you'll be able to see better. So because she does have uh, plenty of hair, if you did not want to add extensions, you, you could skip that step altogether. Um, but we're going to add a few. So I'm just going to start with the top few sections and just add a little bend in her hair. Can you see me okay? Yes. I'm just making sure you get enough slack. So not too perfect, we want this to be like messy texture to match the extension pieces that I showed you. So just a little of that. Okay, so the best tip for blending hair extensions is to start at the bottom. This would especially be true if she had a uh, short hair that you were worried about blending with the longer hair. So you can actually take even more. Like, like even that much. And then we're gonna leave those side pieces out. Divide this in two. Can you still see me okay, Mike? Yes. And again, I'm going fast, so it's not gonna be like perfect sectioning, but it really doesn't need to be down here. You're just gonna begin braiding this as close to her head as possible, just to really get this hair up and out of the way. all the way down to the bottom. And I'm gonna step in front really quick. And then we just kinda seal that off with a elastic. So this is gonna give a really good base for the clip-ins to stick to and it's gonna get her hair out of the way. Just in case there was like a hard line of where her hair ended and the extensions began. Extension hair typically holds curl better. So that's another reason for doing this. Um, we already prepped the extensions. They're ready to be you know, put in. They're gonna hold the curl. This is not quality braiding, this is quick braiding, but you get the, the gist. Okay, so basically what you do now is you just crisscross those like that. 
and you're just basically getting the hair out of the way. I'm gonna do that. Do you need any more clips? Um, I think I'm good on clips. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just removing the braids. This is a great way to travel with hair extensions if you're wanting like that cool girl wave. Braid it, like I said, I triple barreled it, I braided it, then I tapped it with a flat iron, good to go. I'll give you that one too, but you're gonna hand me that one first. Okay, okay. so like I said, crisscrossing over. You don't even have to open up the pins, you just stick them in. Same on that one. Can you see me okay, Mike? Yes. Sticking that in. And I do one, the first one, underneath the braid. Okay, so Lauren, tip your head forward. So I opened up the clips. I'm going into the braid, down, and this is always the hard part to do on someone else without like killing you or hurting you. No. Liar. <laughs> I'm tough. Okay, so then you can see that's adhered into there. Now I'm going to go back over. I'm going to tuck these tail pieces in and the rubber band. Sticking it in. Tucking it in. And this technique it definitely adds a little volume to the hair too which is great but the idea is also just to get it as flat as you can to her hair okay now we're gonna go with the next one opening up all of those going right on top of that braid so the teeth really have something to dig into because I think that's the scary part anytime you're using like clip and extension pieces, like being afraid that it's going to, someone's going to hug you and it's going to pull out or something like that. So that's like nice and secure on there. The next one, I'm going to go right on top of that. Again, opening them all up. So you can go right on top of that track that you just put in. We're not putting any hair in the front, so we just want to make sure everything gets really stacked back here. Coming over to this side. Same thing, opening it up. Right on top of the other one. Mike, can you not see me? Or can you? No, it's good. Okay. And then we're just gonna let this out on top. And you can see that blends pretty good. We can like re We'll, um, triple barrel her ends if we needed to. For the sake of time, I'm gonna just show you the next step though. So that is how we make this look like more of a wet look to match the back. So you're gonna go in with your smooth and shine, a generous amount in your hand. And then you're gonna open your hands really wide. And then you're just gonna sort of start putting it through the hair. It's gonna add shine 
and pieciness. And since those waves are already kind of like the beachy undone curls, it just kind of accentuates that. This is a great trick for photo shoots. The line from the flash, or the light from the flash, really like reflects off of this product. So this would be the stuff that would be more of a, a giveaway, right? So you could just go in, either again with the triple barrel, or you could just kinda go in with your flat iron and touch it up. I would probably go through and do this a few more times, um, but like I said, for the sake of time, we're gonna go in with the glossing spray. So you would keep going in with your smooth and shine until the whole thing looked like how up here looks. Like you would just keep dosing that on. It would make it really a shiny finish. And then you would go in with your glossing spray and this is gonna really shine up her hair. And you notice my hands are never closed off. It's always open fingers on that. I feel like I'm rushing a little bit on this, but you guys get the technique pretty good. Okay, so then we go in and we're just going to remove those clips and you can see that it stays the same down there. So it perfectly stays that way. You don't need any pens or anything. Same thing over here. Gently remove. There we go. And then, like this kind of stuff, you could go in and tweak more. All these ones that kind of like fell out. A little bit more of this. It's just still a little wet. Um, and then what I would do, tip your head forward. See how it's kind of like a frizzy texture compared to the super shiny texture? I like that down here, but I think on the top that might be a little odd. So I would just do one little dose of that. And then for this, you'd go in with the wide teeth on the comb and just sort of give that a quick brush back. And that there would be a modern version of some Gatsby waves. She's ready for some bright red lips and a party dress. All right, any questions? I don't think I came through the pipe, but I'm just gonna reiterate sure. what I'm seeing. And yeah. you can tell me if I'm off base or not. But oh, let Mike learn. Like the main, <laughs> the main part of your technique is sort of blending the two different textures without yep what you call it, a demarcation line, like yep. without a hard stuff yep. between them. And that's where the products are really helping you sort of sell that yep. look. Yeah. Yep. So the products are going to seal this in where she doesn't have to um, worry about it falling out. There's not a bunch of gel. Even if we combed this out right now, there wouldn't be any flakiness. Um, I love the shine differenti differential between the two products. Like I said, if I had a little more time, we would have really doused the ends, so that would have given it that wet wave sort of look. Um, the other kind of cool thing is that you don't have to have really expensive extensions to do this sort of look. These ones were on Amazon for very inexpensive. Um, perfect for just a quick look like this. The braid is gonna like, you know, seal it, secure it in, so she's gonna be good all night. And then, um, yeah, you could take this style anyway. Like for a photo shoot, we would, like I said, we'd be dousing the ends and you'd see all the glistening of the products. 
Um, but I think this is the easiest way to finger wave once I learned this technique, way easier than using gels or any other products. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me or Unite Hair TV. We'd love to answer any questions. If you try this look at home, we'd love to see it. Tag us in your posts. Uh, this live will stay up on the Instagram feed as well as on the website. And I hope you guys all noticed the giveaway that was announced today. If not, go check it out because it is wild. It is a really, really great opportunity. Um, so make sure you enter and check that out. Just a quick reminder, our, our next live is on November 20th. Gary will be hosting, it's at 10 a.m. and it will be cutting tips and tricks. Perfect. Okay, everyone, happy Monday. Have a good rest of your day.